How are we doing guys? We are back with another video and this is my first preview of an Arsenal game as we take on Wolves this Saturday evening. So like I said, it's my first preview of an Arsenal game um, since doing videos again and I'll tell you something, I'm looking forward to this. Of course, it is the final game before we break up for the World Cup. Sounds so weird that we're going to this part of the season and we're talking about a World Cup. Absolutely madness. But we are in such a good position right now. If you would have said to any Arsenal fan, any Arsenal fan, before the season started, that going into the final game before the World Cup break, Arsenal will be guaranteed to be in the top two and they will be fighting it out up the top with Manchester City. I don't think any of us would have believed you. We've had a phenomenal season. We've only lost one Premier League game. And the way that we're playing right now and some of the performances that we've put in, we deserve to be there. You know, Manchester City don't normally start the Premier League seasons that well. They've got a history of starting them quite slowly. And as they move forward is when they start to click into gear. So for the fact that they've had a really good start to the Premier League campaign this time around, and we're above them, says absolutely everything. Now, like I said, we're guaranteed to be in the top two. Um, the next round of fixtures is not going to be until Boxing Day. And um, yeah, to be where we are at that period is massive. Now, some might say if we don't win this game and we finish second, you know, going into this break, it's not that bad because it's still been a great start. I wouldn't really agree with that from a psychological point of view. And the reason for that is, you know, what it's like when you play football and you lose a game. The first thing you want to do is play another game. You want to rectify the wrongs of that last game. You don't want to sit there for days and days on end thinking about it. You know what it's normally like when you go into an international break where you have that two week period. You don't want to lose that game before because you don't want to sit there for two weeks and think about that. You lose all the players, they go off on international duty, but the club itself, the result still remains. And that would be the big issue for me. That if we didn't win this game, Manchester City went ahead of us. Then psychologically, going into such a long break of around about six weeks, I don't know how that would feel on the mindset. The mindset of the fans and the club in general and everything. I just think on that psychological side of things, getting this game won, finishing top before you go into the World Cup break would be massive. Now, some people may not agree with that. Some people may think that, you know, it ain't really that much of a big deal. But yeah, I just think it will be. And, you know, we're playing against the Wolves side that sit in second bottom of the Premier League. Uh, recently sacked their manager. They do have a new manager now. I'm not even going to attempt to try and pronounce his name. You know what I'm like with name pronunciations. I'm not that great at it, so I'm not going to bother even attempting it. But um, he is, of course, the former Spain, Sevilla and Real Madrid uh, manager. And, um, you know, his pedigree, you know, speaks for itself. Um, recently left Sevilla or sacked um, last month or so. It's probably about six weeks or so ago. Um, his time at Real Madrid was not that great. He was only there for four months. Um, and there were some issues, shall we say, at the club and he left saying that he couldn't really get on with the job that he wanted to do because of um you know his hands were tied and his restrictions were in place but yeah he won the europa league at sevilla um, and like i said he's got a good pedigree and um he doesn't actually take over until monday so he's not officially the manager for this game he has a backroom team in place that's been working with um, you know, the interim manager, Steve Davis. Um, but yeah, just how much of an impact will he have right now at this moment? Um, I believe he's going to be at the game watching, but he's not going to have his stamp on this team. He's going to take this break at the World Cup to work with the players that will remain at the club. 
um, and then start to bring his philosophy in. So I think that after uh, we come back from the World Cup is when he will really start to get to work. So I think, you know, in a sense for us, this may be beneficial for us because you know what it's like that new manager syndrome that you know the new manager bounce and all this kind of stuff i know they won their game in midweek in the carabao um it was good you know victory against leeds um but this is different and arsenal are very different and that's not me being big-headed we are just a very very different team right now and um i think that you know if we're going to have aspirations of ever really challenging for the premier league these are the games that we need to be willing uh you know um and Molyneux is not you know the easiest of places to go but like I said they are second from bottom so we need to be winning these games and um I think that we've got a very strong lineup in terms of our starting 11 and everything else we all know about the strength in depth and that we do need to go and you know add some extra players in there in January um, and I think that was evident with some of those second string players that were playing in midweek against Brighton and we of course lost um, and went out of the Carabao Cup. It's not the end of the world in the grand scheme of things. Um, and overall, I thought we actually played quite well. It was a goalkeeping error that brought Brighton back into the game when Welbeck was fouled for the penalty. Um, and I think the first 20 minutes of the second half, we actually were really dominant. And then the second goal changed the game and we ended up losing 3-1. But given the team that was out, 10 changes to the Chelsea game, only William Saliba was left. Listen... It's not the be all and end all. It's one of those ones, isn't it? You kind of take it on the chin. Fair play to Brighton and you move on. But in terms of the starting 11, I'm going to go and get into my predicted lineup. And you know what? For the first time in a very long time, I actually think Arsenal have got consistency in terms of their starting 11. Like I said, the substitutes and the depth is a little bit questionable. But starting 11 is capable of taking on anybody in the Premier League, in my opinion. So with that said, let's go and get into my predicted lineup. Starting off in goal, Aaron Ramsdale. I don't even need to debate, do I? And I'll, you know, this is the first opportunity I've had to actually speak about my comments about Aaron Ramsdale before he signed for the club. And I said I didn't want him. I was one of these that followed, you know, what was out there and, you know, the perception that we had. He'd had two relegations before he was joining Arsenal. And I was like, nah, not for me. Not for me. But I tell you something, he's proved me wrong all day long. He's been brilliant over the last couple of years. And um, he deserves all the praise he can get. He's absolutely outstanding. And um, I think it's just more, um, you know, calls to say that you need to back the manager and trust him because he got this one absolutely spot on. Um, in terms of the defence, I think the back four takes care of itself. Ben White, right back, exceptional. Deserves his call up to England for the World Cup. He has been immense. Um, Centre-backs, William Saliba, Rolls-Royce, absolutely immense. Again, another player that you've got to say, Mikel Arteta got it right. Sent him back out on loan for a couple of years. Didn't feel he was ready. Everybody moaning about it. i tell you something. Proved right. He is exceptional. Um, Gabriel alongside him. Now, a lot of people will focus on the odd error here and there that he makes. But the partnership he's built up with Saliba is excellent. Um, left back, I'm going to believe it will be Sinchenko. And um, I think you saw in the Chelsea game just how important he is. The style and the system that we play with that inverted fullback, very reminiscent to what they do at Manchester City. And I think he is key to that. Simple. Um, in terms of the midfield, Thomas Partey and Granit Xhaka. Thomas Partey, this is the player that I'm seeing that we bought from Atletico Madrid. He is immense, an absolute one man brick wall. And what he's allowed Granit Xhaka to go and do. It goes without saying, he is so key to this team. Keep Thomas Partey fit and we will be absolutely fine this season. Um, Granite Xhaka, like I said, what an unbelievable season he's having. And um, it's so nice to see what he's doing. And, um, you know, everybody had given up on him. Even his biggest supporters like myself. I'd spent years backing Granite Xhaka. Years. 
I'd faced so much abuse over backing Granite Shaka. And it got to a point where even I was like, nah, it's done. It's finished. He's got to go. Um, and even Granite Shaka himself, he said recently that when Mikel Arteta came in, he said to him, I want to leave. My time at Arsenal's done. So even Granite Shaka himself had said it was done. But I tell you something. Pfft, wow. He's been absolutely immense. Playing in a further, more advanced position. I can't really say no more. Fair play to Granite Xhaka. And fair play to Mikel Arteta for getting the best out of him. Absolutely superb. Um, the attack line. And um, I think on the right-hand side, Bakayo Saka. Excellent season again. Love to see a little bit more protection for him. Because uh, it seems to be this misconception that he uh, goes over easily. The guy gets absolutely kicked from pillar to post. So none of that. Um, on the left-hand side, Martinelli, absolutely superb. And again, this is a player that had um, an injury a year or so ago, a really serious one uh, that he picked up in training. And when he came back, a lot of people were moaning, why is he not playing? Why is he not playing? Arteta don't like youth. Arteta doesn't believe in him. And I kept saying then, let Arteta manage. He knows what he's doing. And do you believe now that he doesn't like him? Do you believe that he doesn't give youth an opportunity? Come on. Martinelli is exceptional and he's been brilliant. Um, and he plays there all day long. Um, in the middle, we have Martin Odegaard, the captain. Um, he's been superb. What I will say with Martin Odegaard is just his end product in terms of scoring goals. If he can add that to his game, then he will be unbelievable. Chance against Chelsea last week. Prime example. Goes through. Should be 2-0. Misses it. Needs to be more clinical. Bit like he was the week before against Nottingham Forest. If he adds that to his game, along with the way that he actually dictates, you know, the play in general, superb. Um, the striker, Gabriel Jesus, and um, a lot of people sit there and say, you know, he hasn't scored in nine games and this and that. And yes, we will need him to start scoring goals um, sooner or later as well. But if you do not realise what he brings to this team, then you may as well just stop watching football in general because you do not have a clue. He is absolutely superb. What he does, he leads from the front. He's an example. He's a winner. And everybody else, you know, thrives off what he does. And it's as simple as that. Gabriel Jesus is an immense footballer. And he has been one of the signings of the season. It's as simple as that. So I have no more to say on the subject. So for me, that is the starting eleven. I think it's so self-explanatory now with Arsenal. For too many years, we were picking players, square pegs, round holes. Didn't know who was going here, there or anywhere. But now we have consistency and a team that is able to compete at the top end of the table. And it's as simple as that. So huge, huge game. Three points needed. We then go into the World Cup break. Top of the table. And I, for one, think it's fully deserved. We are where we are on merit. We are where we are because of the performances. And people still don't want to believe us. People still want to criticise us. It went from... Not beating teams, you know, at a good level. It was just teams that you should be beating. To then going into October and it was, oh, but now you've got a run of fixtures and they're piling up and you're going to find out just how tough it is. To then going on to, oh, well, you know, other teams are maybe not playing at full. Save your excuses. Just admit that Arsenal are title contenders. It's as simple as that. Move on. Get on with it. Mikel Arteta's red and white army. Ah, lovely jubbly. So listen, um, if you're new around here, do make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you smash a like on this video. In terms of content coming up, there is going to be so much content. We're going to be doing some stuff over the World Cup, um, of course, with England and everything else. In terms of the watch-alongs, watch-alongs will start in regards to Arsenal when we come back from the World Cup. This gives me the opportunity to get the studio and everything all in place and set up. Um, and then to figure out things again and, you know, get some guests on, do some, you know, very interactive stuff. There's some big, big plans for the channel and um, onwards and upwards. But yeah, like I said, subscribe, like, and I will see you a lot soon. I'm out of here.